Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on uh, forming ions, which is really important to understand if we want to understand ionic bonding. Now, before we can understand anything about forming ions, you need to make sure you are secure with atomic structure and electrical configuration, and I have videos on both of those things. So, in this video, we are going to start by looking at positive and negative ions and how they form. We'll look at why ions form. Then we're going to look at the details of the ions of groups 1 and 2, which are quite similar. And then we'll look at the details of ions for groups 6 and 7, which are also quite similar. And then we'll finish off looking at some of the compound ions, those ions that have more than one atom in them. OK, so let's start by thinking about what ions are. Now, before we can do that, we need to remind ourselves what atoms are. Now, they are the smallest stable particle of matter. And importantly, they are neutral. That means they've got no overall charge. Now, the reason why is because they've got equal numbers of positive protons and negative electrons. So all the positive charges and the negative charges cancel out to give no overall charge. For example, sodium here has the atomic number 11, which means it's got 11 protons and 11 electrons. So all the positives and all the negatives cancel to leave you with no charge. Similarly, for fluorine here, fluorine contains nine uh, has a total number of nine so it's got nine protons nine electrons and all the positives all the negatives cancel to leave fluorine atoms negative overall okay now ions these are atoms that have a charge and they are formed by gaining or losing electrons we have two types of ion cations and anions so let's start by looking at cations these are positive ions that are formed by losing electrons. So let's look at the example of the sodium ion. This forms one of these cations. So here is our sodium ion there. And the number of protons hasn't changed. We've still got the 11 protons we had to start with. But now we've got 10 electrons. It has lost one. There was one there. Now there isn't. So that electron there has gone. And that means we've now got one more positive charge than negative charge, so it's positive overall. Anions, on the other hand, are negative ions, and they are formed by gaining electrons. So let's look at the fluoride ion. This is formed from fluorine atoms. Now this time, look, the number of protons have stayed the same again, but this time we've gained an electron. Now, gaining an electron makes you negative overall because electrons themselves are negative couple of really important things to remember. Um, important thing number one is that the protons never move. When we form ions, it's always about electrons moving. If we look here, the protons started at 11 and finish at 11. On the fluorine, our protons started at 9 and finish at 9. We don't gain or lose protons, we just gain or lose electrons. The other thing to remember is how to remember which one's which is that cations are positive. And remember that because cats have cute little cat paws. So the next question to think about is why do ions form in the first place? Now, if we come back to atoms, atoms often have incomplete outer shells, which makes them unstable. So to become stable, they must change. And that's what happens when they form ions. So if we think about metal atoms, first of all, metal atoms often have one or two or three electrons in their outer shell. Now, for them to, to become stable, what they will do is they will lose their outer shell electrons. And because they're losing electrons, they will become positive ions, cations. The shell underneath will be complete and therefore stable. And we can see that with lithium here. The lithium atom has lost its outer shell electron to form this lithium ion with that complete shell of just two electrons underneath. And so now it is stable. Non-metal atoms gain electrons to complete their outer shell. And because they've gained electrons, they form anions because they've gained a negative charge. OK, that will mean that the outer shell is now complete. And again, therefore, it will be stable. And we can see that here with the example of oxygen. Oxygen starts with an incomplete outer shell because there are those two gaps there. And as it forms the oxide ion, it gains one electron and another one. That gives it a two minus charge, but importantly, that shell is now complete. So let's look first of all at the formation of ions in groups one and two. We'll start with group one. Now, group one is the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Now, these all have one electron in their outer shell. You can see that here in the example of sodium, just there, it's got that one electron in its outer shell. Now, 
When they form ions, they will lose their outer shell to form single positive ions. And we can see that here. So in the sodium ion, just there, we can see the outer shell is gone and the new shell underneath it is now complete. The way we represent ions like this is we draw a diagram, then we draw square brackets around it and we put the plus charge outside. And also don't forget that we've got the electron that we've lost is drawn next to it just there. And what about group two? Well, group two is um, beryllium, magnesium and calcium. These all have two electrons in their outer shell and similar to lithium, they will lose them. But if they're losing two electrons, rather than being just plus, they will now be two plus ions. So we can see that with beryllium here, it's got those two electrons in its outer shell. It loses them both to end, leave you with the beryllium ion here, which has that complete shell of just two electrons because that's the first shell. And because it's lost two electrons as well, it's got that two plus charge to make it Be2+. So what about ions of groups seven and six? Now, rather than losing electrons to empty their outer shells, these are going to gain electrons to complete their outer shells. So let's have a little look. Um, group seven, we've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. We sometimes call these the halogens. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. They've all got seven electrons in their outer shells. So to complete them, they will gain one electron to form single minus ions. Importantly, um, with the anions, when they form anions, their names change. So rather than being fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they become fluoride, chloride, bromide and iodide. So that means they are negative ions. Um, we just change the N in their names for a D. And we can see that here. So here's, uh, here's fluorine. It's got an electron configuration of 2.7 because its atomic number is 9, so it has 9 electrons. Um, it will gain a single electron and become this ion here with 2.8. So it's gained that one extra electron there. The reason why is because it had an incomplete outer shell where it needed one more electron, and that's what it's gained. And then just take a look at how we draw this. So to draw ions, we put these square brackets around like that, and then we put the charge outside the square brackets. So how about group six then? So group six, um, the only two we need to worry about are oxygen and sulfur. Now, because they've got six electrons in their outer shells, they will gain two this time to make it up to eight. And that will give them a two minus or a two negative charge. And again, we rename them in a similar way. So rather than being oxygen and sulfur, they become oxide and sulfide. So every time you see that IDE ending, that tells you you've got an anion. And we can see an example of that here. We can see how sulfur has got these six electrons in its outer shell. It's got a gap there and a gap there, so it needs two more to complete its outer shell. And so it gains those two electrons and it forms our sulfide ion here with that two negative charge because it's got those two extra electrons there. Now, the final thing to think about on this topic is that um, some ions are actually made of more than one atom all sharing a charge. And we call those compound ions. Now there are a few that we need to know. You do not need to be able to draw their structures but you do need their names and their formulas and their charges. So the first one we've got is hydroxide. Now hydroxide has is an oxygen and a hydrogen with a negative charge. We can see what its structure looks like but the key thing is get that name and the formula. The next one we've got is nitrate and um, this is the NO3- minus ion. To be really clear what that means is 1N three oxygens and overall a negative charge. We've got the carbonate ion CO3 2 minus. So here's carbonate CO3 2 minus. Again, what that formula means, one carbon, three oxygens and a two minus charge overall. Then we've got sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Um, Again, one sulfur, four oxygens, and that two minus charge. And the last one we need is ammonium. This is our only positive compound ion. So ammonium has the formula NH4 plus. So again, one nitrogen, four hydrogens, and an overall positive charge. Okay, so that is me done. That is the end of this video. As always, well done if you got this far.